Hi, I'm Dr. Alex Russell from the Experimental Gambling Research Lab at CQ University Australia. In this video, I'm talking about bot protection in Qualtrics surveys. Bots are becoming more common and also a lot more sophisticated. Qualtrics is responding by giving users more ways to detect potential bots during analysis and also ways to remove them prior to starting the survey. Let's get into it. So here we have a support page from Qualtrics which talks through fraud detection and a sample survey that I'd been playing around with the other day. But it'll do for our purposes today to show you how fraud detection works. Now the first thing to know is that fraud detection is an add-on for licenses and isn't necessarily by default included with all versions of your Qualtrics license. So it depends on, you know, which license you've bought, but it will be included in a lot. So I'll try and point out fraud detection that's available across most licenses, uh, as well as things that are only available in certain licenses. Uh, if you need more fraud detection in your surveys, then talk to your administrator about buying um, that particular add-on for your license. Okay, so there are four main ways in this fraud detection article to protect your survey from bots. Now, we'll run through all of these and sort of talk about what you can actually do with the information that comes from these fraud detection measures. Importantly, you need to set these up before you launch your survey. If you launch your survey and find that you're getting hit with a whole bunch of bots, then there's not too much you can do about it once it's launched. The best solution, if that happens, is to stop that uh, survey, to close it, to open a new copy of the survey, so to duplicate it, um, and set up the fraud detection in that. That will mean a new link, so you'll have to redo all your advertising, but it will solve a lot of the problem. Before we get into this though, let's consider how we recruit people into surveys. Now, one of the things that we often do with surveys is we'll advertise uh, some kind of inducement, you know, we might pay everyone who takes part in a survey or we might have something like a prize draw So, you know, this is one of my recent studies um, Where we had gift vouchers. So there were 200 gift vouchers each valued at hundred dollars pretty generous um, And so, you know, you can imagine that a lot of people might have been interested in throwing a bot through that survey To have more responses in the pool to have more of a chance of winning one or more of those hundred dollar gift vouchers that's kind of the idea of bots. It's all about getting more rewards. So it could be more of a chance of winning the prize draw, or if you're paying everyone who takes part, uh, you know, more of those compensations. So it won't matter so much when you're doing a survey that kind of relies on people taking part based on the goodness out of their own heart. You know, if they're not getting rewarded for this, there's usually not too much point throwing a bot through a survey, but they can still get hit. So something to be aware of. All right, so how do these fraud detection measures work? Well, three out of the four fraud detection measures here will give you some kind of score or some kind of indicator that tries to work out whether a, a particular respondent is likely to be a bot or not. And the other one, um, email scan roadblock, I'll talk about all of these in detail, but email scan roadblock is the idea of stopping email programs doing a security check on a survey to see if a link is you know, malicious or not. Uh, and that also counts as a start in the survey because once they click on the link to try it out, um, that starts the survey. So there's four different things we're going to work through. The first one is this thing called uh, ballot box stuffing. Now ballot box stuffing is a very basic way of dealing with bots. What happens is when someone takes the survey, a cookie is uh, put onto their computer in their browser. Uh, and that cookie then is looked for when people try to take the survey again from the same computer and same browser. And if you've said prevent ballot box stuffing and that cookie is present, then they won't be able to take it a second time. Now, I think all licenses in Qualtrics offer basic ballot box stuffing. Uh, and you find it here in survey options. There's this thing called prevent ballot box stuffing. Uh, if you click on that, not all uh, licensing in Qualtrics will show all of these options, but you know if you do have uh, these options available to you, then here's what they do. Uh, so if someone tries to take a survey a second time, then uh, it will end the survey and display a default message, which is just like you know thanks for trying. Um, or you can have a custom message there, which is often useful. You know, it looks like you've taken the survey before. If you think this is a problem, please contact you know here's my email address. And that can be a way of uh, dealing with the issue 
Um, because sometimes you might have a legitimate reason for someone to retake the same survey. Um, so for example, uh, if you advertise to people in a household and you know one person takes a survey and then someone else goes on the same computer to take the survey through the same link, they should be allowed to do so. So maybe um, we wouldn't want to prevent ballot box stuffing at all in that case, or maybe we just want an indicator. Uh, we can make it so that they don't get a message at all and they're just redirected to a different website. Um, or we can do this thing where there will be a new variable in our data set that has a value of true if the cookie was on their computer, if they are doing the survey a second time. It still allows them to do the survey the second time, but you can just see that they've tried a second time and maybe you might want to consider excluding them from the survey. You don't have to, it might be legitimate for them to do it a second time. But if you don't have that set up and you haven't clicked this last one, then that information about whether they're doing it for a second time is not available to you. So it's usually worth turning this on. And if you don't want to exclude people, if, if it's legitimate for them to do it twice, um, or you want to let them do it twice and you can decide later what to do rather than you know, relying on the survey to get it right in terms of detecting fraud here, you can just say continue and set an embedded data variable. So that's uh, ballot box stuffing. It's pretty basic. There's a bit of a problem with it because all it takes to do a computer a second, uh, to do a survey a second time is to go to a new computer or to use a different browser or to wipe the cookies from your browser history. Um, so bots have gotten a little bit smarter than this, but this is a pretty standard one that is available. Um, all right, so the second one here is uh, this thing called bot detection. Now, bot detection works through this idea of captures. We'll have seen captures before. So if you look at captures, you know, you might've seen things like click this uh, box to indicate that I'm not a robot, or sometimes, you know, you need to type in whatever text is in a particular box. So I need a drink right now and someone's typing me too, cheers. Um, or these ones that we're all kind of familiar with, you know, which of these squares um, has a vehicle in it. And they're always a little bit annoying, you know, when there are these kind of ones there, it's just a little bit of the vehicle over the line, like, what do you do? Uh, but that's the idea of a capture. You know, the, uh, the idea is that a computer shouldn't be sophisticated enough to be able to see that image and work out what a vehicle is or to read text that's distorted. So we've, we're all kind of aware of the idea of captures, but there are also, you know, various other captures that can happen behind the scenes. And uh, this is all developed by Google. So we turn this one on using the bot detection button here. Um, and what we get out of it is this thing called a capture score or a recapture score. Uh, and this score runs from zero to one um, and a score of greater than or equal to 0.5 indicates that they're probably human. But if it's less than 0.5, then they're probably a bot. So we can actually use this to even just have that variable so we can make a decision later during analysis. We'll look at all their scores and go, well, it looks like this person here has a score of 0.4. They're probably a bot, so maybe I'll exclude them, but I've still got their data there in case I'm making a judgment call. I know that they're not for, for whatever reason. Um, or what we can do is do it in survey flow. So in survey flow, what we do is right near the top of the survey, we'll add a thing in here, uh, which is a branch. And the branch is based on the idea of embedded data uh, which is this score that will come out, this Q recapture score. That's what your embedded data variable is called and see my other video on how embedded data works. If this is less than 0.5, then what I want to do is I'll add some embedded data here so I know what's happened. I'm going to call this um, uh, termination reason, right? Why are they being booted out? And we'll say here that it's because of their recapture uh, score okay so their recapture score is saying um, that they're less than 0.5 so there's going to be a new variable in here called termination recapture score uh, and that'll say that anyone who's got a score of less than 0.05 they're going to have this variable termination with this um, level recapture score so that's what's going to be in their data um, and then i'm going to kick them out of the survey so end survey now I could do this without the end survey thing as well. They'll still be able to go on and do the rest of the survey. But uh, if I want to uh, actually decide to terminate them just so I don't have to sift through the data later, um, then I can add this end of survey element too. 
So that's how you can use this. So you can either decide just to flag them and not have the end of survey element and then look at that during data analysis later. Or, uh, and then what, what's good about that is that you can then determine, you know, if bots are an issue, if you had lots of bots in your, um, in your um, survey. Um, or you can add this end of survey element and the sur uh, survey will end automatically for them. Normally, you would have this as the very first item in your um, survey flow. Uh, all right, so that's what you can do with these types of variables. You can either just have the data in your um, data set there about whether they're likely to be a bot or not, because it'll have their actual recapture score, or you can actually use that in survey flow to boot them out of the survey. All right, there's this thing called an email scan road, roadblock. So if I go into survey options, I can click on, you know, prevent ballot box stuffing. I've got that one set up and I'll just let them continue. Bot detection so that I get those um, Q recapture score embedded data um, actually sort of saved in their data set there. Email scan roadblock is a little bit different. Email scan roadblock, there isn't any score in their data, um, but it uses the same recapture kind of technology. And the idea here is that it determines whether it's an email program that's trying to check the security of the link that you've sent through. So you might have seen this where um, more and more email programs or browsers, if you click on a link that's dodgy, it kind of stops you trying to uh, actually open that page. But usually they do that by testing the link. And if the link in your email that you send out to your participants, for example, is a um, survey link, then clicking on the link starts an attempt. So clicking email scan roadblock just stops that happening and stops you having all these started attempts at the start of your survey. Um, again, this may not be available in all licenses. Uh, now the last one is relevant ID. And this is a similar thing to recapture essentially. It's all about checking fraud all about checking for you know duplicates or, or issues like that um, and this one actually comes out with three separate scores so if we scroll down on the help page we'll see that there's three separate scores that come out so if i turn this on i'm going to have three new embedded data variables in my data set one of them is called relevant id duplicate and people either have a value of true if there's a duplication there or null no value if um, it's not a duplicate or it can have a duplicate score from zero to 100 and a score of 75 or more means that the response is likely a duplicate. Um, or we can use this relevant ID fraud score, which is a slightly different thing, works on a different scale, but it's the same idea. It's this idea of here's a score and the higher this score is means it's likely to be a fraudulent attempt or a bot of some sort. So all of these things here, um, again, can be flagged in your data set um, so that you can decide whether you want to use those uh, to, you know, after the data is collected, um, rule some people out, or we could do the same thing with survey flow here. So I could also add in, um, say, a new branch um, here where instead of it just being recapture score, I could base this on embedded data of uh, let's do this Q relevant ID duplicate is equal to true. All right, so if that's the case, um, then I can do the same thing I, uh, as above here. So I can say in this case, embedded data is termination. You know how you can never type well when people are watching? Termination, and in this case, it's relevant ID um, duplicate. Um, and he will uh, choose to end the survey, but I don't necessarily have to if I don't want to. Um, all right, so these are the options in terms of bot protection in a survey. There are a couple more in survey options here as well. So if you wanted to, you could put a password on the survey, but you have to think, so people can't take it unless they enter a password, but you have to think about how you're gonna get the password out there. And so if you're advertising a survey publicly and you've got next to it, here's the password to take part, um, you know, a bot can learn that potentially as well. Um, there are some other things here like a HTTP referrer verification as well, where if you're only advertising on one particular site, uh, then uh, for someone coming to that survey, they have to come from that particular site where you're advertising the survey. This is potentially a little bit problematic if you want people to help share your survey link. 
because then you need to uh, add in their URLs um, for um, referral verification as well. Uh, so not always the best one to include, but just showing it um, in case that's an option for you. So just to summarize, there's four main things in survey options that we can use to help us um, uh, protect our survey from bots. The most basic one is prevent ballot box stuffing. If you turn that on, you will have an embedded data variable here, Q underscore ballot box stuffing, um, and it has a value of either null or true, um, and it's likely a bot if uh, this is true. Bot detection then, that, that's what it's called in survey options, is the recapture score, so Q underscore recapture score. Um, values from zero to one, and if it's a low score here, then likely to be a bot. Email scan roadblock doesn't give you embedded data. This is just an actual block to um, security program starting the survey. Um, so there's no actual values or anything here to have a look at. Uh, whereas relevant ID, there are three options. So it's either a duplicate yes or no, true or null kind of option, or we can actually have a look at the score it got from duplicate, zero to 100. And if it's 75 or higher, then it's likely to be a duplicate. And same for fraud, score from zero to 130 and 30 or higher is likely to be a duplicate. So you can use this in survey flow to either just flag people or kick people out. Uh, and it's up to you in terms of your survey, what's most appropriate there. Uh, so just be aware though, it, it's sort of not always the case that a higher score is better. So this one in particular, people are likely a bot if it's less than 0.5 on recapture, just make sure if you're going to use this in survey flow that you get things the right way around. So that's it for this video, looking at bot detection and uh, what we can do in Qualtrics surveys to protect ourselves. Now, this is a work in progress. Watch this space. Bots are getting uh, smarter and Qualtrics is also responding in different ways too. So keep an eye out and if you see new things coming through, uh, make sure that you leave a comment below uh, so that I can you know, update this video if needs be. In the meantime, I'm Alex Russell from the Experimental Gambling Research Lab at CQ University. Sorry for the kids' noise in the background, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.